Hello everyone, my name is Monica Martin and I am here to discuss with you the theorist of Joanne Duffy, who is a PhD. Um, Joanne Duffy is a professor at Indiana University and she's also an intern associate dean at Byrne Health Center. Joanne Duffy teaches nursing theory, research, she also teaches leadership, she teaches to DNP and master's level students. This theorist created the quality care model, um, which is such an important part of my nursing career. It is the center of my nursing world, actually. I work in a skilled nursing facility and everything we do is based on skilled level quality care nursing. So we use the quality measures from CMS to determine reimbursement for our patients. The better the reimbursement rate and the higher level of quality care, the more funding we receive and the better off we are financially. So for us, the actual quality care model is something that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. With that being said, and us using it daily, we take quality measures very seriously. We execute quality measures and monitor them on a day-to-day -day basis in everything we do. It is entirely the center of our world, and it affects every nurse in every position in the setting that I work at. So what you see in front of you is my concept map. And in my concept map, it talks about the nurse's role in implementing a culture of patient safety within a long-term care setting to avoid falls. Falls is such a hot topic and it does affect a lot of different theories, but for this one, it to me, it really took a toll in what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. When I looked at the falls, I also looked at all the different components that have to go along with the fall and figured that education affects all of them. So we talk about the fall and we talk about resident rights and how they're impacted, residents' abilities, communication, the environment, safety tools and assessments, but we ultimately educate everybody on all these different topics. So a resident's right to maintain freedom and dignity and independence, that has to do with avoiding falls. If we are making sure that our patient has dignified care and that we are they are as independent as possible, we're going to, um, in the long term, avoid having the patients have a fall. Example of this would be putting your patient up against a table at lunchtime. If you lock the wheelchairs, they're more accepting of, um, or attempting rather, of getting up and trying to move away from the table, which could cause them to fall. If you don't lock them and that's their resident right not to keep them um, restricted, they're going to be able to push away from the table and go to where they need to go and they wouldn't have as much of a chance of falling. Another is their ability. If they're assessed appropriately and they are able to walk, then they would not be at risk of falling. So we use patient safety tools, such as fall risk assessments and medication reviews to make sure that they are safe enough to have independent ability. If that independent ability, their weakness or cognition or gait is off, it is going to affect them having falls. Again, it ties into the education. The education needs to be a huge part. We need to know that the resident's ability needs to be consistently monitored in order to make sure that we're preventing falls. A lot of this has to do with patient communication. We need to communicate with our staff through education um, what the resident's rights are. We need to discuss daily about their abilities. We need to utilize any new safety tools or assessments and making sure that we're doing rounding and really monitoring and observing and assessing our patients to make sure that they are safe. It's that key communication. A lot of us do rounds for that sole purpose of we are not getting enough communication or we're not learning enough information about our patients. So that's why we go and we round. We try to see for ourselves what's going on. So that's a huge thing. And then we talk about the environment. It's huge. You need to make sure there's appropriate lighting, that they have everything they need in front of them. You have safety equipment. You have the call bells. You make sure that there's no spills so that they will not have a fall. Not having a call bell in place will get somebody to get up and move away from the bed and do it independently with not following their care plan or not getting assistance and it's going to cause them to fall. 
the best way that I look at this is if you look at a patient and you bring them into a facility and you set them up in a wheelchair and you put the call bell next to them, um, that would be not the best quality measures to make sure that the patient is cared for. If you put them in the hallway and you keep them in eyesight and you put a table next to them and you have their favorite things next to them and their water next to them because they can drink it, well, that's a little bit better. Then you have the nurse who puts her patient in a nice area where she can com the patient can converse with other patients and they have a way to communicate with the nurse and they have things that are appropriate in them or by them that they can utilize that would be a little bit better. When we go into quality measures, we talk about putting the right patient in the right location with the right atmosphere, with the right people around them, having music to keep them calm, have them properly medicated. Have they gone to the bathroom? Have they been asked if they need anything? Have they been checked on every 15 minutes to an hour to make sure that things haven't changed? That's when we're talking about quality measures. There's a big difference between putting someone in a wheelchair and putting a call bell next to them and going to the extra step of making sure that everything that they possibly can need will be addressed. So in a long-term care setting, when we have a patient who has a fall, we have to report it. And that fall is then reported to the government, who is our main payer source. They know by the investigations that we do and the information that we independently submit to them that we have or have not actually used all the quality measures and all the things we could have possibly done to take care of the patient at the highest level of care and have the best patient-centered outcomes. So that's just one fall and that's just one particular patient in one particular moment. And as you can see, based on that, there is a lot that goes into quality measures in my setting. So the next to talk to you about is Joan Duffy's quality care model. This model is the foundation of quality care. Um, there's many assumptions and propositions about the quality care model, which you can look and you can see. But basically what it's saying is that human beings, human beings that are cared for and who are treated better and feel that they belong in the situation and they do everything possible in order to make their quality care better, they're going to have better patient care outcomes. It's about the nurse and the patient relationship. It's about that professional encounter. It's about treating them to the highest dignity and standards of care that you can. And because of that, you have better patient outcomes. It, that's the basis of the model. Basically, the more you put in is the more you get out. If you put in more effort into taking care of them, you actually get more out of it. If you have a patient that you take care of and you do an excellent job for, they're going to have better patient care outcomes. I think the best example I use for this care quality model is there was a patient one day that I had that had asked me to open the window for them. And when I did, she started to cry. And I said, I don't understand. Why are you crying? Are you happy? you know, you had asked me to open the window for you. And she said, this is the first time someone has opened the window for me in five years. And that's the first time that I've seen snow since I've been in a long-term care facility. It's the difference of tucking in your patient's feet at the end of the night um, and making sure they're comfortable and they have a home-like environment versus just throwing a blanket on them and putting them in bed. It's making sure that they have all their needs met. It's basically doing for yourself what you do for them. So if you're going home and you're getting ready for bed, you're doing the same thing for them in this type of environment, especially in our setting, we have to do whatever it takes to make them feel as much as they are at home as possible. So quality care plays a huge part of that role. And that was my presentation on Joan Duffy and the quality care model. I hope you enjoyed it and you can see my references on the next slide. Thank you very much.